All right. Hey, folks, welcome to NTD Racing. We're here with Bob, Honcho, Ryan, and Snapper. We're here today to, uh, to talk about a couple things. Uh, let's start with talking a little bit about how we got started with this whole gig. I'm pretty sure it happened when uh, we were on lockdown at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, you, were, you were shacked up in your place. And then I rolled over with a beer and then you know, isolating and at home was over at that point, right? I think he Speaking like, of beers, yeah, I'll, you want her. You, uh, you good or you? I'm, I, I will oblige, absolutely. In fact, so, uh, here we go. Just so you know where we're at, we're in the uh, Anza Brego Desert. We're just north of Akatia Wells. And we got Honcho out here, we're doing some testing, but we're also kind of out here with uh, Bob. Um, cheers, gents. Cheers. 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 Prost. Ancho, Ancho, Ancho. So uh, I read all the comments from our videos, and one of the comments that we got, guy said, "How can you do a review on Bob and the CVT tent and all those kinds of things when you've only had it for uh, a couple weeks or a couple days? You know, we had it <laughs> for like six minutes, I think was his quote. Right. And so now we've had it for six months now." Oh, more than that. I mean, and, we, we wrapped Bob in the end of January. And you guys have been working this thing out. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, I think we know most kinks in, uh, in the Bob setup and system. And we've uh, really kind of embraced the Bob lifestyle. It's been, let me just go ahead and route off a couple of places. It's been in Newport Beach, California at Crystal Cove. That was a nice little surfy adventure. We took it out to Ocotillo and Superstition multiple occasions to go run out Honcho and see some of our buddies as well from around uh, Encinitas and San Diego. We did that trip. Uh, we dragged Bob all the way up to uh, the Redding, California as well. That was fun. Saw the Trinity, Lassen, Shasta Mountains, and dropped down to Tonopah, Nevada, which if you haven't been to Tonopah, uh, you will if you run the Vegas Torino race. It goes right by it. S sweet little spot for uh, watching racing. Then uh, popped down to Utah uh, through St. George and into Zion and uh, had a nice little family huddle there. Uh, Palm Desert, Big Sur. So Bob's been places this year. God, that is a lot. It's <laughs> this year, like, dude. Like what, six months? Is that how long? When, when did we finish Bob? End of January. End, end, end of January. January. So we're actually talking eight months. Eight months, yeah. Talk to me about, uh, to answer this question that we had, yeah. talk to me about durability. What have we had to repair? Uh, Zero.com, zero.com repairs. And it's been not only incredibly durable, but also a crowd pleaser as well. How about the, uh, the CVT? Um, mm. I, I, I have a sprinter. I usually do uh, camping underneath a hard roof. How about the durability of that tent? What, what are your thoughts? Would you buy it again? You can't beat it really. I mean, there's some finishing elements that the CVT community is there for you to kind of help with. You know, little tips and tricks to perfect it for, you know, setup or for breakdown or for things you could add on to it. But, you know, the level of tent that we selected was the more durable and rugged trim level with thicker canvas. And what's so impressive about it is we were camping in about 35 degree weather out in Zion at nighttime. And, uh, you know, the kids were up top, not even sleeping in their sleeping bags. Totally comfortable. It blocked, uh, blocked the breeze, kept in the heat, and I haven't had a single tear. I haven't had a single issue with any of the zippers. So I would give it five out of five, big time. I'll, I'll tell you what else I'd give a five out of five. Mm. It's like, it's probably a hundred degrees out here already. It is baking. Um, and we'll talk about the new air in a second, but this awning, yeah, total game changer. I can't wait to have this out totally at the Baja 1000. We, he didn't join us for Vegas Sereno and we missed the whole time. It would have been just the hit out there. <laughs> uh, what, what's the brand again on this thing? This is uh, an Overland Systems uh, awning, and it's a 270-degree bat awning with, I want to say, 140 square feet of shade provided, which is impressive. I mean, you're all swinging all the way around to the tailgate. You're getting coverage um, on Bob with the linear actuators to go up and down. It's nice. You can kind of get it dialed in to exactly how we want shade to be provided, and you can see here... We're very comfortable. Snapper and I were checking emails and shooting social media updates right before we started the video. So it, it provides plenty of coverage. And I would say, yeah, total game changer. I think on the enhancement list uh, is some air misters. You know, that would be nice. Some air misters would be 
uh, an amazing compliment to our awesome cooler that's followed yeah, us around those, as well we could definitely add that in all those things you'd have like on your patio at home you know with totally some kind of cover uh, i get a lot of questions you know where do we get the actuators where do we get the awning where do we get those kinds of things we have provided links to all those if you go to www.ntdracing and then click on store scroll down to bob mm -hmm. you'll find that if you want to know how we did electrical it's on there and all those kinds of things you can find that information right there let's talk about the new air uh, it, <laughs> I, I we just pulled ice cold beers out of the new air and it's like 100 degrees out here this thing yeah. you guys have been using it and and i wish julie was here to talk about it because she would give you the totally honest review yeah i mean she would just tell you go buy one and that she was skeptical at first of having an electrical cooler but the time savings the ease of not having ice as well uh, especially when you're off the grid for a long time has proven to be a huge benefit also it is really hot out here and i got an alarm on my cell phone so i had to like reset it it's i mean you could use it for nearly anything so i had to cool off my my cell phone <laughs> in the desert heat <laughs> i think it's ready to be used again but uh yeah i mean it's great and you could dial in freezer or cooler or whatnot and then you could you know charge your accessories off of it it's been a ton of fun and uh you know, we look forward to more collaboration with the newer peeps as well. And th this thing's got some use. You can tell there's a little bit of battle damage here up on the handle. Uh, but besides that, it, it's been working great. Again, uh, you go to ntdracing.com. We have a link. We'll save you 10% on this uh, cooler, which makes it a good deal. I think you find other coolers that look like it. Um, and so obviously people are making the same kind of cooler. But I think that 10% just kind of takes you down to the point where this one hits the price point for uh, for purchasing one of these. And it's been a total winner. We basically yeah. use it all the time, leave it on, use it as a beer cooler at the house or when we're on the road, we use it. Uh, you guys have been using it all over the place. And, Absolutely. and if, if Julie's happy, if mom, when mama's happy, everyone's happy. Full so. squad. Cool. Yeah, that's been great. And then also uh, back to the electrical though, which has been a total build out on its in itself. I mean, if you haven't taken a look at the solar setup that we've got here, I mean, we can live off grid with the cooler running, iPhones charging, any sort of devices. I even ran an electrical uh, kettle, electric kettle off this this setup, but it totally did did uh, did the job. And I think we could just run in perpetuity without without ever needing to have a generator or whatnot, just for the power of the sun. Yeah, I think everything. if you check out the video where we did the electrical and it was kind of like the finishing video for the the for Bob. Mm -hmm. I kind of ran through some math on how long the battery should last. And I think it was some poor math because remember whenever you take a deep cell battery, you really only discharge it to 50%. So some of the math was wrong. But that being said, real field testing. Yeah. One battery, the two uh, solar panels, which you can find on our website, what the, exactly what we bought and we're using here. You ran it for how long? And it was still working. I mean, like we had, we ended our trip and it was still running. So yeah. that was like a week long trip. A week long we're trip out there. Yeah. So, bottom line, you put ice cream in your cooler, your new air cooler, and a oh, week yeah. later, you still have frozen ice cream in your cooler, and you haven't plugged into any shore power anywhere. Right. You're just using solar. That is, unless like you guys are hanging out because you will have eaten the ice cream, and but you know, vegetables will still be in the cooler. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> what are you saying? I eat like a five-year-old. We need we need Janny out here. She, she usually <laughs> takes the pressure off me. I think we got to do this. More. If you don't know Janny, check out the outtakes from one of our pre previous videos. She is the destroyer, the pickle. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts, Snapper? You, your first time around, Bob? Well, you know, it looks complicated to me. So I'm wondering, <laughs> how long does it take you to you know go from you know on the road to the site to fully functioning family comfortable mm. eating ice cream you know that's a good drinks. point because you and i are you're a westphalia guy right, right. you have a Vol volkswagen right i got a sprinter and it's basically stop pull the spark parking brake and you're camping right, right. Uh, yeah what do you what do you find like at least as a minimum to get to this state and then maybe to get the, the tent up also i mean this state is pretty simple i mean the secret here is you just unzip it to let the magic happen and but for a full camp setup it's got a you know, you got to unfold the thing, get the ladder out. You're probably in it for about 30 minutes or so, at least to get it just deployed and the bare minimum. The annex is another setup that I would give you another 10, 15 minutes because there's some staking yeah. that's involved there. But the added plus with the annex is just more living space. You get effectively double your living space or 
you know, give yourself a nice entrance in. And in colder weather or really hot weather, you kind of want to need, you're, you're going to need that, that shaded area. Now, remember the plus of having a trailer with this deployable tent awning and whatnot separate from your vehicle is such that I can unhook my truck from this now and I could go rip around and leave Absolutely. this camp set up, yep. which, and as well for how nimble the platform is with the M1102 from Shoot Industries, which I got off Gut Planet. Um, you know, the ability to crawl through pretty much any overlanding, you know, or off-road trail is unparalleled because you're, you're not going to be pulling through your Sprinter van and its current setup. No, I mean, right? in fact, we, you know, we went camping one time and yeah. <laughs> you had to pull us out of the sand I ain't you know so like yeah. one of the you know the benefit is i can pull a parking brake on camping right the the where you have a benefit is once i go off the pavement i'm basically getting stuck is yeah you know if i cross over a six inch log i'm stuck I'm that's right and, and we could still both have electric kettles and you know boil water wherever we want it's just the thing is yeah. i could go a little bit deeper everything's got trade-offs and yeah but you definitely get yourself to the gucci spot where you know, at times, especially now during COVID, all the park, the campsites are, are packed up. So, you know, finding a BLM land or something like that, where you can just take your Westphalia, your, your sprinter is a little more difficult yep. and you can go deeper in beyond where everybody else can go. Good nose um, in there. Yeah. S Snapper, what do you think? Where, where would you, where would you envision taking the Bob setup with Honcho? Well, I wanted to hear more about Tonopah. Did you see any uh, aliens down there while Dude. you were there? Tonopah is a straight trip, man. Yeah. You go in there and there is a clown hotel, nice. which is like, it sends chills <laughs> right up your back when you go through there. I and mean, it scared me so bad that as soon as it got dark, I didn't want to leave our own hotel. We stayed in you know, one of the, the more common hotels up the way, but you could feel the presence of the haunted clown hotel the right down the way, dude. Clown hotel. <laughs> well, I don't know if Definitely anyone notices here from this angle too, but I mean, we even got surfboard racks here on Bob. And uh, on both the Big Sur and the Crystal Cove trip, you know, we went ahead and we slapped up a, an array of our surfboards. A whole quiver went on top of Bob, and uh, it was just a ton of fun. I think, you know, we even set uh, set up on the beach out in Big Sur, and my seven-year-old son surfed for his first time, got his first wave in Big Sur, and that was all kind of made by, made possible by Bob and the extended rack system we had on him. To go back and talk I about mean, it? the only one thing on Bob that we should talk about is uh, is you know what we what we expect of it out in the field, you know, in Mexico. You know, I, I think that can be almost summed up with what we wanted while we were out in the Vegas Arena. Yeah, that's and a good that way. was like so. It, there was a, a line of cars a half mile long getting ready to start, and there was a five hour delay. There was a big accident, and uh, yeah, yeah. So there's a big accident, delayed it for about. Uh, five hours and we were out there and everybody is out there in the sun and so we brought out this blue tent we kind of carried it along it was just you know it was what it was uh but to have bob out there i think would have been a next level game changer where people have been like not only is that cool but the space underneath this awning is what how many square feet 140 for memory i mean it's huge you might have to put an asterisk next to that it, later it but is yeah. huge and cozy. You, could, you could sit under it you could have tools in it you can actually do work under shade which we'll be doing here on Honcho here when we're yeah. doing this video. So I'll be reading a book maybe um, while you're doing that. And I, I think as far as that goes, that you know Baja is going to be a lot of the same. It's going to be during the day. It's going to be really hot, mm. and during the evening it's going to be cold. And you guys have spent a couple nights out yeah. here in the cold. What's that like? I mean, it's actually at one point when I forget where we were. I want to say we were. I think we might have been coastal in San Diego. Yet another place we took uh, Bob to go camp. You know, we actually just opened up the windows and it was pretty cold at night just to get some of the fresh air in. I mean, it, it keeps you warm. It keeps you warm, certainly. Yeah, I think this thing in a race setup in Baja is going to be a total game changer, especially for the chase crew. Because if you're going about in 100 mile increments or so and daisy chaining down the way, there's a lot of, you know, posting up. It took, I mean, just a couple minutes to get this sucker open. And uh, you can make yourself a Rita or open a beverage of your choice and you could just be hanging here waiting for you know the truck to roll through and i think that ease is gonna is it coming big time yeah i want to get this to new mexico dude i totally want you to get this in new mexico yeah yeah there's some fun there's some fun stuff i think i think this could make it all the way to la cima in new mexico which would be 
there, there's a spot there, which is literally, I think might would be my favorite spot to camp on, but I can't get a tent up there. I can't get any, but wow. you might be able to get Bob up there. Put in four by it, it Crank would be, Bob up. it'd be dicey. Have you been to, Oh yeah. Oh, a bunch of times. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of times. Several. Yeah. Well, you, you think you can make it up too? Oh yeah, for sure. There's that one section. It might be a little one rough, section, but. but I could bring the back and pull you out. Okay. Do you have a do you have sleeping facilities or will it be us three dudes in one tent up there? Uh if we if you take Bob out there, we either sleep uh on the property. There's probably places you could lay out cots mm. in our cantina or yeah. just go down the street to the uh, lodge or you go into Taos and stay five star at La Fonda. Okay. I'm not sure cool. it's five star. I might have overshot them. Yeah, I would love to live, I'd love to stay out on the land and get this thing set up. Yeah, dude. You know? I think uh Let's, let's try and push for that this summer. I think that would be a lot of fun. I hope you like what you saw here today. There's a lot of really cool content coming up here, especially as we're approaching the Baja 1000. Uh, maybe you'll consider hitting the like and subscribe button below. Maybe hit, ringing the bell for notification for future episodes. And with that, we'll see you next week. Take care of yourself. Ancho! 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 Dude, is that like freaking... Are you about to have like an alien come out your stomach? Because there's a lot of yeah, noise right. going on over there. It's we like, skip breakfast in here. Dude, so. it's, it's like, did you hear that all the way over there? I, like, I, I expect to see like. I thought that was Bob <laughs> settling or something. <laughs> I did an alien come out. <laughs> you know what? No, man. I've got, I got an animal named Merv living in my stomach. Oh, nice. my gosh. He's hungry. Number